Hello and welcome to Business Mondays at the Urban Farmhouse. I'm Renee Fisher with Vaco and I have here Tom Bird, the founding partner, founding person, founding president, right, of Take Care Group LLC. Tom, I've known you in so many different roles in the past. Why don't you talk to me a little bit about how this came to be, Take Care Group LLC, and your past and how we're here today. Sure, I'll try to give you an abbreviated version. I began my career with uh, KPMG, which is an accounting firm here in town, and spent 11 years working for them. In that capacity, mm -hmm. I got to see a variety of clients, right. ranging from a seminary to a logging equipment uh, wholesaler to Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And after 11 years in public accounting, uh, I had the opportunity to go out to Blue Cross of Virginia. And at that time, we were a nonprofit company, and we went through uh, many, many changes. And so, uh, going through uh, becoming this chief financial officer of a public company, going through mergers and acquisitions, seeing companies coming together, uh, provided me, I think, a pretty unique uh, perspective on sort of leadership and some of the challenges that that foretells. Right. Right. Okay. Well, good because today's topic is New Year, New You, and. We thought it appropriate to spend a little bit of time with Tom about leadership and overall leadership qualities of a management team in general. So basically, what do you see are the really solid characteristics of a successful leadership team? Well, there's certainly lots of elements to a successful leadership team, but I think one of the ones that sometimes often gets overlooked, quite frankly, is make sure you're maintaining the focus on the customer. You can get so internally focused that you forget why you're even there. Okay. And so good leadership teams are continually evaluating what they're doing from the context of the customer's perspective. And that begins with really having a clarity of mission, a clarity of focus, and a clarity of values. I think so many times we give lip service to those words, but at the end of the day you need to know why you're in business, and you need to know what values you're really emulating uh, for your customers and for your associates. Uh, an example of that to me is uh, you know, putting them in tiered perspective, for example, uh, Walt Disney, everyone knows, the Disney world, you go and you have a good time, but their, their value propositions or their values start with safety being the number one value. So they're all about everybody having a good time, but if somebody hears a scream, it doesn't matter, we're going to go take care of that person. So, so you have to know what your values are and what order to evaluate your decisions about. Interesting. Is there any one pitfall that you see in companies, maybe a weakness that you see in executive management teams that are common, a common thread? Well, I think, it's, again, it's easy to get internally focused. But, and so that sometimes leads to what I call inaccessibility. And that can be either real or perceived. Okay. Um, so you can have a management team that is not having information pulling up to them mm -hmm. uh, because of the perceived inaccessibility. Let me give you an example of that. When I uh, first joined the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Virginia, um, the person that I reported to at the time was this chief financial officer. And I had known this person for a long time and had a good relationship right. with them. Uh, but I was, within weeks of being there, I was having other vice presidents calling me and saying, can you get me in to see the CFO because I can't. And the VP had no idea this was going on, the CFO had no idea. And it was all because his administrative team had put up a barrier in front of him that he didn't know was going on. And so in that case, it was an unawareness of the inaccessibility, but it's creating issues for the company. Right, right. That's a good point. What about, what should a team and how should a team handle when they have to change out an executive leader and how does that affect the team in general? Well, I think that really begins uh, with having ongoing 360 feedback. So in other words, the, the, the executive team, the leadership team has to have continual meetings mm -hmm. and knowing about where each other stands, what their perspectives right. are, and, and then making decisions about we need to make a change within the leadership team. And then I think the emphasis needs to be on the hiring process, right. making sure you get the right person on the bus. You know, if you get the right person on the bus, you've got a good chance of having a safe, safe and successful journey. But sometimes we spend too little energy on the hiring process. Okay, that's good. What about, you talk about giving everybody leadership skills throughout the entire organization. How do you do that and still keep up with the budget and the business metrics and give everybody that value add feeling? Well, it's probably uh, maybe a little funny for an ex-CFO to still say not to put the emphasis on the numbers. Right. Uh, but I really do believe that. Uh, that you know, the key, the differentiator between a good company and a, a great company mm -hmm. is those that can capture that discretionary performance of the employees. Okay. And so sort of, well, how do you do that? You have to give the employees purpose and meaning right. and make sure they're work that matters. And so you have to be able to relate their day-to-day -day tasks, whether it's cleaning the floors or washing the dishes, or, or shoveling off the sidewalk that they're making a difference and tying, and, and tying it into the company being able to perform. Examples of that, uh, 
uh, go back to the Mayo Clinic, um, there's an example there where uh, during a consultant visit, the janitor was whistling uh, while he was sweeping the floors, and they asked him, why are you whistling? He because I'm saving lives. And so the point being that he was tying keeping germs out of the building as to help the doctor save lives. So you have to be able to relate each individual's position into why they are making a difference. Because right. at the end of the day, everybody wants to have a sense of belonging, a sense of appreciation, a sense of that value. Right, right. The one quality of leadership that probably has been, is long gone now. What would you say for 2012, we need to write off this and not go back to it? The old school leadership. Well, I, you know, couple things come to mind. I think one of the words, phrases that was coined a while back was managed by walking around. And I think Tom Peters may have coined that. And so the idea is getting out of your office, see what's going on. But you really got to go beyond walking around and actually listening and paying attention. So I think we've gotten too much lip service to being visible. Being visible is not enough. Right. You've got to be engaged. Okay. And so that would be one example, I would say. Um, and another example would be that, back to what you mentioned earlier, is the overemphasis on measurements and the balance sheet. At the end of the right. day, we've got to be investing in our people because people is what's going to make it, make right. it happen. Okay, good. Well, one last quick, quick question. What's your New Year's resolution for 2013? My New Year's resolution for 2013, uh, if I had to summarize it real shortly, would basically be more intentional. Okay. And what I mean by that is not having good intentions because as my mom used to say, the road to hell is paying good intentions. But by right. being more intentional, it's about actually getting something done. So, right. So uh, really shipping and getting it done. Nice. Well, thank you, Tom. We want to thank Tom Bird for being here today. And on behalf of Vaco and Craig Forbes at Alpha Omega, we are signing off for Business Mondays at the Urban Farmhouse.